Connor, just can you give me your sense of kind of where, where the group is at? Once again, my teammates come up short. Welcome back, everybody, to the Big Apple Hockey Honest Press Conferences, where we say what the athletes, executives, um, hell, even uh, entities like Rangers Twitter wanted to say. Um, actually, I thought that was going to come out funnier on the Rangers Twitter, but, you know, it didn't. <laughs> uh, so that, that's why I ended up getting crapped in the short version. And um, I we got... A couple guys that are going to be showing up in a minute. Yeah, we'll start with this one. We're going to start with Mr. John Falkowski as John Davidson. So my time as Rangers president uh, came to an end. And now I'm back with Columbus, enjoying my time there. And now all of a sudden I see that my former general manager, Jeff Gordon, was on a podcast with um, Cam Jansen and Andy Strickland. And they were talking about what was going on with the Rangers behind the scenes with the whole Tom Wilson incident and that all process. Um, I can tell you right now, a lot of the things that you guys thought that you knew, you don't know at all. We were trying to get toughness together in... Uh, New York and there's a whole lot behind the scenes that will eventually come out and I think it's going to change the uh, the light in which the fans see the current owner and the man who's in his ear so if you guys have any questions play them on me uh, yeah JD um, are you still dwelling on the past or does it really matter at this point. You're just looking forward for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Come on, man. Really? Really? Do you do you make a habit of asking these terrible questions to paint people in bad light? Like, if I didn't know any better, your name would be Larry Brooks. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. That's, that's just fighting words, J.D. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, that's what I would think you would be doing there, because that, that's what it sounds like you're, kinda, you're trying to do. Is that your shtick or something? Uh, no, no, not, not not trying to do that, J.D. I don't know, no, okay, okay. Because all I got to say, fighting you would be just, oh, oh baby. <laughs> so, yeah, I was about to say, I'll, I'll give you an oh, baby to go on about. But, um, you know, um, you know what, we're moving forward, and now this whole thing comes up, and now I'm going to have to talk about this garbage again, and, go into details about this because they got Jeff to go on. I, I know the questions are coming. So I guess I'm going to have to get this out of the way and deal with the elephant in the room and deal with the nonsense and the drama. So I'm just going to, you know, basically say it how it is. And if um, a certain kid with it, well, cause he is a, a gigantic kid with a silver spoon in his mouth, doesn't like the fact that I'm coming out and saying these things. He knows where to find me, and we can have a little chat. Um, I heard there's a certain man named Lamorello that likes to put horse heads in people's beds. I think I could call him up for a favor, as I've been chummy with him over the years. So, um, James, if you're listening, feel free to call me, buddy. We 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 have we have some things to talk about. So, JD, uh, you're back with Columbus. Um, you you were with Columbus the. Uh... The year where you know Bobrovsky and Panarin uh, informed you guys that he wasn't going to re they weren't going to resign, um, and then you had and then you had the issue with, with Pierre Luc Dubois. I know um, you were with the Rangers this past season, but you know signing the deal and then say you wanted to be traded, and he ultimately was. And then you have Seth Jones, who you know who said he was a year away from unrestricted free agency and said that he wasn't going to sign, and you know and he left too. So are you are you concerned with how these star players are? essentially just been filing out the door in Columbus and how do you, is it, is it the city? Is it the, the view of the, of the ownership or like how, how are you going to fix this issue of losing star players who don't want to be there? Oh, it might be a combination of things. Um, somebody asked, um, I overheard somebody asking which, which city has a better nightlife, Columbus or New York. Um, does it bear shit in the woods? I mean, cause it's definitely New York. Obviously, anybody with a brain knows that. Um, 
that that could be part of it. You know, people don't want to live in an area like Columbus where, you know, there's not a lot to do, especially if you're a younger guy. Um, for the more family oriented ones who are settling down and have wives and kids and don't really care about that, then maybe it's a better place for them. Um, as opposed to uh, what you're, it looks like you're trying to paint this as a culture problem. I don't know if that's really appropriate, but um, and no, sir, um, New Jersey is actually the armpit of America. So we, we don't agree there, buddy. Um, yeah. Um, you're, you're looking at a situation in where there was some information leaked. I think it was last year while I was not with the organization. And it was a bunch of anonymous players who didn't have the balls to come out and say who the hell they were. And basically, basically painted our management in a bad light. Saying, you know, basically saying that Yarmo was a my way or the highway type guy and that they didn't value the players. And, and, and you know what? If you're running a business, you're going to try to get the most production you could possibly get at the cheapest possible rate, correct? Because that's how you maximize profit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you have these players that think that they're worth set amount and they don't perform up to it and they want more, then you know what? Sometimes somebody's got to put the foot down. And if they don't like that, you know what? Just like Kevin Adams said to Jack Eichel, we want people who want to be here. We want people who want to win here. We want people who are going to change the culture in the locker room. Um, again, like I said, I don't necessarily think that's fair, but maybe management can be tough on players because sometimes you have to be tough. And um, if they're not going to produce and they're not going to get us what we're looking for, you know what? It's, it's my job to look over and, and look at Yarmo and say, hey, maybe we need to move said player. You know, Panarin, that was an unfortunate thing. He he liked playing here, but he wanted to go elsewhere. And you know what? I don't blame him. He didn't pull the snake move like a certain guy on Long Island did, but um, he was upfront about it. Seth Jones is another one who was upfront about it. Um, I couldn't do a whole lot because I wasn't here for that. But I wish I was because I could have talked to Seth and maybe I could have, maybe I could have helped him. But you know what? We still have Zach Warinsky. We still have Patrick Line. We still have Alexander Texier. We still have pieces. We got a bunch of draft picks back. That Seth Jones trade was great for us. You'll you'll see how fast he falls off in Chicago with like no help around him and a, and a 37 year old goaltender that's not going to be able to save the world with no defense in front of him. That'll be interesting to watch. But um, you'll you'll see. We're we're on a team on the rise. And we got to start, you know, from the bottom. It may be almost a bit of a scorched earth type situation, but eventually we'll get back to prominence and we're going to start winning playoff rounds. Just watch. Well, thank you very much for joining us, JD. And I'm sorry that I was in your Chateau Bow Wow. So. Yeah, do a better job of staying out of the next time, Slappy. <laughs> All right. So there was our John Pukowski as uh, as John Davidson, who I would love to have a beer with that guy. That guy John J.D. is awesome. <laughs> but moving over to Islanders captain Anders Lee, and it'll be brought to you by Anthony LaRocco. Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, I haven't spoke publicly um, you know, since the injury where I, I tore my ACL. But, um, you know, I've, as you guys saw, they're in the playoffs. Um, I was back on the ice and I was doing some pretty advanced things. Uh, I was ahead of schedule. My knee feels really good. Um, you know, I'm going to be heading back to Long Island uh, in the next week or so to start to skate with some of the boys at uh, Northwell. Uh, so I'll be ready to go at training camp 100%. Um, and I just have to say, you know, it was it was tough to watch the guys out there battle without me going on the run they went on and getting to the conference final for the second year in a row and getting even closer this time. Um you know, you're talking one, two goals away from going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, I wish I could have been a part of it. Um, it really hurt to kind of, you know, be on the sidelines and, you know, essentially be helpless. But um, I'm proud of the boys and how they played. And I'm excited for this coming season. New year, UBS Arena. Uh, we're going to start on the road for about 13 games. You know, we're going to bond, uh, get on a roll and come back to a brand new building. And, you know, me and all the guys are really excited about that. And, um you know, I'm, I'm happy to get back on the ice of Barzy and, you know, reconnect with my chemistry we had there. Um, I know Lou 
had to make a difficult decision to leave uh, Ebbs unprotected and, you know, move out Leds, um, you know, for more cap space. You know, uh, we, we all kind of knew at the end of the year we weren't going to be able to bring back the whole team uh, due to the cap situation. Um, but Lou has done, um, you know, a fantastic job with creating more cap space for us. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to have uh, uh, Paul Mary back. I mean, uh, I'm really excited to have um, – uh, Pajot back, you know, because he hurt his uh, he hurt his hand there in the in the conference finals. He um, he wasn't himself uh, that round, so I'm glad he's back to uh, being 100%. And um, you know, I was just uh, playing in. I normally play in the beauty league, um, you know, in the summer, but uh, I decided not to play this year uh, just because of my knee. Even though I'm good to go, I just didn't want to risk anything. Uh, but my boy Brock tore it up there. He's one of the best players in that league this year, and you know I got to see um, I got to see Parise because he was playing in that league, and um, you know from like me, he's from Minnesota, and I'm I'm really excited to um, I'm really excited to play with uh, Parise this season. I'm I'm really I'm just really excited to you know how me and Parise got to play some golf together this summer. So I was really happy about that. Um, you know, kuda, I wish him luck wherever he ends up, but. No, I'm, I'm I'm really excited for the coming season. Uh, be back on the ice, the boys, and um, you know, watch out for us because we're gonna make it back to the conference finals, and this time we're gonna we're gonna go all the way. I'll take some questions, guys. Anders, how ex- how close exactly were you to being back? And it was kind of an improbable look for you to be skating as early as you were. So, um, how ex- how exactly? Like, how close were you really to, to being back with the team there? Uh, you know, pretty pretty close. I know um, I heard some fans talking, you know, read social media. They're saying, oh, they, the Islanders should pull a Willis Reed moment. I should have led the team out for warm-ups in game seven. Um, honestly, if, if the if the Stanley Cup Finals was like one one week later, um, that probably could have been a – that probably could have been a realistic issue, a realistic uh, plan, I should say. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to play the whole game, maybe just do like a shift or two like Stamkos the year before. Um, but I was I was close. I was close, and um, and it hurt to see the guys lose one nothing. You know, I'm hard on myself, and I just can't help but think, you know, if I'm playing that game, you know, maybe, you know, my big body gets a piece of a puck in front. and So I really stung, um, really stung. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be back on the ice uh, fresh with the boys uh, this coming season. And, uh like I said, with having um, having some new faces or maybe not new faces, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I'm really excited. Anders, um, can we at least announce that you're going to be back? Because we can't announce that there are any free agents or anything signing. Uh, I mean, I know you're under contract, but, I mean, what can you tell yeah. us about you? Yeah, I'm, re- I'm ready to go. Um I'll uh, I'll be activated off uh, injured reserve. Uh, like I said, I'll be ready for training camp. Um, no, but Lou, you know Lou is Lou. Um, you know Lou is uh, he's the mafia boss, man. You know he's uh, <laughs> he does he does what he wants. And um, no, I, I talked to Trotz and you know I talked to Lou about you know I listen. I don't have any input. He does what he wants, but he you know he kind of talks to me being on the captain of the team, and he and he asks me, hey, you know what do you think? Um, you know, if I if I signed Zach Parise and I said, oh, you know, Zach Zach's a great guy. He's from Minnesota. Uh, he had a rough time there, being phased out, kind of hurt his confidence, but he'll bat, he'll bounce back. But um, uh, you know, I'm really I'm really happy that we signed Zach Parise. And nah, sorry, I slipped up. I'll 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 retract that statement. Now, don't don't don't. I, I don't I don't need anybody knocking at my door or hor- okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, no, I, I I messed up. I was just screwing you guys. He didn't he didn't he didn't sign pre. He's I think I think he's signing a PTO with the Sharks. Um, <laughs> but no, you know I, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, and I have all the confidence in uh, in Lou. Um, he he's he's a great guy, and um, you know he he likes to you know what can I say? He's a stereotypical Italian, you know. He's but he's awesome. He he really is. Well. Anders, thank you very much for joining us because uh, it's been a pleasure, and I'm sorry that you had to watch that entire playoff run, but I'm happy you didn't watch the Islanders win. So. <laughs> Thanks. 
All right. And lastly, <laughs> you got to go with the king, uh, Henrik Lundqvist. That'll be me. You know, endings never are the way you're supposed to do it. In, or it never it, Careers never end the way that you think in sports or the way you want them to. Very few guys ever get to walk off into the sunset. And um, I, I wish it was the case. Uh, I wish I was at Madison Square Garden giving um, my retirement speech after winning the Stanley Cup after this team got all the way back. But instead, you know, circumstances happened. Uh, I was bought out last year. And uh, they found they found uh, some problems that I was having health wise. And th- you could say that I'm retired because of, you know, heart issues. But I can tell you, I retired from a broken heart because I still wish I was in New York Ranger right now. And you know what? That's the only jersey I ever wore officially. Uh, I. It was the first one I had in 2005, and uh, I earned my way to be a star on the New York Rangers, playing in the world's most famous arena in front of the greatest fans of all time. And sure, there are people that want to go off and go, oh, he's king, king nothing. Well, first off, that's like a mediocre uh, Metallica song. Secondly, which I can play very well because I'm an accomplished guitarist, but it's also, did you see the defense I had in front of me for years? Michael Roosevelt was my best defenseman. But I'm not here to throw other uh, guys under the bus. I mean, sure, I had Ryan McDonough in the, in the early 20 teens. And Dan Girardi was a nice spot. Mark Stahl showed some promise. But, I mean, come on, people. You see what I had to work with? But I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus whatsoever. I love I love everybody that I had uh, the goal scorers that I had on my team on my roster. You know, for those three years when Yager scored uh, when Yager scored fifty goals, when uh, Marion Gabrick scored forty twice, and Rick Nash had forty once. Yay! That was it, people. You know what I had to work with. It was basically, Henry, can you please stop everything in front of us? But you know what? That's what I had to do. And you know what? I am grateful I had that opportunity to do that at Madison Square Garden in front of the greatest fans in the world. And you know what? There are those people that are critics, like, uh, I don't know, um, people on an upstart YouTube channel that have an Islander guy on there that'll go, oh, well, he really didn't win a championship, so he's not all that good. Well, you know what? You know how hard it is to win one. Just ask Jerome McGinley. So it's uh, it, you went. Just ask Ray Bork. Ray Bork only it only had uh, his last shot at it. So people, give me a break. You know how many pucks to the head I took for three years? Or just or for three years, fifteen years, because I took so many pucks to the head. People, I'll take some questions. But by the way, I just want to say this: from 2015 to 2012. You couldn't find a better playoff performer. Yeah, I had a few bad games in 2015. Give me a freaking break, people. Henrik, uh, aside from the obvious not winning a cup, is there a regret that you have with your career, whether it's not playing in a certain location or not playing with a certain teammate or you know maybe winning another Olympic gold or so on? You know, I know this is usually a humorous segment, but I think if there's anything, I wish I never left the New York Rangers, but I do, I would probably regret never having a chance to play a game with my brother, Joel. I mean, sure. I mean, we're twins, but you know, one of us is one of People Magazine's 50 most beautiful people. (laughs) Uh, But that that would have been great to have have him come to us and play because Joel was... uh, uh, a good player, a good player in his own right, and it was it was great to play against him. And it was the most nervous I ever was playing in an NHL game, and that includes Game Sevens. So Henrik, um, obviously, it was reported that you you started training this summer with your intent to you know play and land on a team. Um, well, there what what teams were had 
you know, interest uh, in you? Was there mutual interest? I know, obviously, last year you signed with the Capitals. You never got to play for them. But um, was there a union there or, you know, were you going to go to another team? What what teams were you looking at before uh, you had to really stop doing what you were doing? There were teams that were calling me because they've seen my resume. They know what I could do. But it, it's it's so hard for me to think about wearing a different jersey. Um, I, I knew I was going to do it with the Capitals. And then I – because, you know, my buddy Alexander Ovechkin was, was trying to convince me. But it, it, was, very, it was very difficult. Uh, I had so many great years in New York, and I'm so grateful. But it's just – I don't think I could play for another team. And it was going to be difficult uh, probably taking some time off from my health situation. So it's uh, – it, I, I just I, – I couldn't do that. I, I had a great career. I was blessed to be where I was. That's that's what it will come down to. And I hope every single day Ranger fans knew I tried to carry myself uh, the to be the best face of this franchise they could possibly ask for. Thank you, Henrik. Long live the king. Long live Thank the king. Thank you, Henrik. Not exactly our funniest sketch ever, but it was still that's 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 sort of that's sort of who Henrik was. Henrik was sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta throw for a loop, you know. Yeah. By the way, actual quote, I believe he he did say the most nervous that he was was playing against Joel. Yeah. Yeah. I I, uh, I heard an interview a while back saying that. And. That's that's amazing to me. I mean, I'm surprised. Like the maybe the, the competitive urges got on there. But by the way, what do you guys think? Um, Henrik Lundqvist appreciative about playing in New York City. Uh, John Davidson won the lay uh, people's elbow on James Dolan or Anders Lee. Uh, is he going to have a horse in his bed from accidentally leaking some information? Put it all down <laughs> in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.